morning. morning. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A warm welcome to all of you, especially those of you that are visiting and those of you that are listening live on the radio. And to all of our new members, it's great to have you part of our community today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Lord God, Heavenly Father, send forth your Son to lead home his bride, the church that with all the company of the redeemed, we may finally enter into his eternal wedding feast through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost is from Amos, the fifth chapter. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. Why would you have the day of the Lord? It is darkness and not light. As if a man fled from a lion and met, and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand against the wall, and a serpent bit him. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light, and gloom, and no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feasts, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the peace offerings of your fattened animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs, To the melody of your harps I will not listen, but let justice roll down like waters and the righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do, who have no hope. 
For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. According to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Let me ask you a question that has been on my mind a lot lately. Are you prepared? Did you bring your umbrella to church today? Because there is a 20% chance of storms this afternoon. Have you bought your turkey yet? Thanksgiving is a week from Thursday. Have you started Christmas shopping yet? We only have six more Sundays until Christmas Eve. And for those of you that are not retired yet, are you financially prepared not to receive a regular paycheck? Are you prepared to die? Have you written out your last will and testament. Now a few of you have reached out to me this week and asked, Pastor, are we prepared for a tragic event 
like what happened in Sutherland Springs, Texas, a week ago today. Now I know some of you here today are probably thinking, Pastor, please don't talk about that. That's scary, and I don't want to hear about it. Well, I'm here to remind you that evil does not win the day. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. I've been sent here to tell you that you and I are prepared for whatever might come our way, not because we have umbrellas, a good financial planner, our Christmas list is complete, or because we have big guns and a thick bomb shelter. You and I are only prepared because of what Jesus has done on the cross to secure our salvation. In our text for today, Jesus shares a parable with us all about being prepared. Listen to our text. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. Matthew 25 is designed to get us to think about the day in the future when the Lord will return. So let me ask you again, are you prepared? Are you prepared for Jesus' return? The sinful spiritual complacencies that show up in various ways is more than enough proof of sin that resides in our hearts and the sin that separates us from God. You and I on our own could never be ready for Christ's return, even on our best day. That is why God the Father sent his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, so that on the last day we will be prepared to meet him face to face. Jesus' first order of business was to make us ready by removing sin from our record. Jesus came face to face and dealt with Satan's temptations in his life of this world. And he came face to face with hell's punishment for our sin in and through his death and resurrection of the cross. And now, risen from the dead, Jesus declares to you that your sins have been buried in his tomb. You have been risen to a new spiritual life. God has done everything to make you fully prepared so that you can stand righteous before him on the last day. You see, thanks be to God that you and I are Simon Hustis at Picotter, at the same time a sinner and a saint. And thanks be to God that he gives us the promise and confidence that because of Jesus, we are fully prepared for whatever may come our way. And not only did he send his son to win your forgiveness, he also sends you his spirit to sustain your faith. His Holy Spirit adopted you in your baptism. His Holy Spirit is at work in your hearts as we gather around the scriptures and gather around this altar. His Holy Spirit is at work using the forgiveness applied to you through his holy word and baptism and holy communion to sustain you in God's holy, as God's holy sons and daughters. We see it here this morning with all our new members. Several of you are newly baptized. The Holy Spirit continues to work in the lives of his chosen people. The Lord continues to grow his church by bringing more people into his loving fold and preparing them for the gifts that he has in store for them. Today, we are reminded that even though you and I are tempted to get complacent 
with our spiritual preparation for Jesus' return, God is never complacent about our preparation. He wants you and I to be prepared, and that's why he wants you in worship each and every week and in Bible class. This is where he can train you, mold you, and prepare you and get you ready for his return. Someday, Jesus will say to each and every one of us, ready or not, here I come. Faith in Christ alone not only receives the word and promises of God, but it also preserves it. So whether you're a visitor, a new member, or a member here a long time, no matter how depleted you might feel your faith is, Jesus' grace delivers through his word and sacrament, now fills you with all that you need to be prepared for his second coming. When God forgives your sins, you are prepared for Christ. For Christ died for you to forgive you of all your sins and now opens up for you eternal life for all who believe. So here's your one takeaway. If something like what happened in Texas happens here, I don't know if we're truly physically prepared. I'll leave that to the elders and our ushers. But I want to assure you of this, that whether you feel prepared or not, God is always prepared to give you the gifts that he has secured for you through his death and resurrection. We not need fear the bridegroom's coming, and Jesus God has prepared us with everything we need to meet our Savior. By faith, we are ready. You are prepared for the Lord's return because your lamps are full of his oil. You've been baptized, you've been absolved, and God has preached into your ears. You've feasted on the one body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus, the bridegroom is coming. Your lamps are full and you are now prepared by God to receive Jesus as your bridegroom and you have nothing to fear. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. I now welcome our new members to come forward. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? If so, answer... Yes, with the help of God. Do you renounce the devil and all his ways? If so, answer, yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit? If so, answer, yes, I believe in God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you believe in God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the doctrine of the evangelical Lutheran church drawn from them and confessed in the small catechism to be faithful and true? If so, answer, I do. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? If so, answer, I do by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the word of God? and in faith, word, and deed, to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? If so, answer, I do by the grace of God. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? If so, answer, I do by the grace of God. Do you desire to be a uh, become a member of Emmanuel Lutheran Church? If so, answer, I do. Will you support the work of our gracious Lord 
has given this congregation with your prayers and the gifts God has given you? If so, answer, I will with the help of God. Upon this, your confession of faith, I acknowledge publicly that you are now members of Emmanuel Lutheran Evangelical Church and of this congregation. Receive the Lord's Supper and participate with us in all the blessings of salvation that our Lord has given to his church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise for prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for all your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that by your word and spirit they may continue steadfast in the one true faith in the fellowship of this congregation, as together we await the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. We now confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For your holy Christian church, almighty Father, especially the persecuted Christians in China, India, Saudi Arabia, and throughout the world, and the Lutheran Church of Togo, Lord, in your mercy, for all pastors, O good shepherd, especially Matthew, our synod's president, Timothy, our district president, for Josman, our pastor, and for all who serve this congregation, that in all things they would speak the truth and love and be faithful in their witness. Lord, in your mercy, for all of our families here at Emmanuel, O oh blessed hope, especially Brian, Veronica, and William Manwaring, Ron and Dorothy Manwaring, Brian and Julie Merrick, and Phil Maxheimer, Lord, in your mercy, for those in need of your healing touch, O oh great physician, especially Pauline, Carrie, Bertha, Becky, 
Patricia and Rick, Betty, Carolyn, Norman, Steve, Florence, and Hal, Cash, Joseph, Bernadette, and Kevin, Laura, Joanne, Irv, Jean, and Ken. Lord, in your mercy, for all those who celebrate the gift of life, O Creator, blessed, especially Shakur, Jackson, Kim, Norman, Kimberly, Alice, and Devin. Lord, in your mercy, for all those who celebrate the gift of marriage, O Heavenly Bridegroom, especially Andrew and Carrie. Lord, in your mercy, for all of our members, O faithful Lord, especially our newest members, Lynn, Shelby, Amara, Darla, Brian, Jacob, Lisa, Jim, Haley, Josh, Anaya, Carrie, Kylie, Jackson, and their families. Lord, in your mercy, for those who come to your altar this day, O bread of life, especially that we would be prepared in you. Do things the Jesus way. Never fear anything, for you are in control. We would be forgiven for all of our sins, placed under your protection and care, and granted the peace of your holy touch. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.